All right, 7-5-C, solving with radicals or variables on both sides. Just a couple of reminders that, of course, if one-half times one-half equals one-fourth, then I can split one-fourth up into one-half times one-half. There's a reason I'm writing this. We'll get to it later. This can be split up as one-third times one-half. Okay, so, again, these are opposites of each other, so they cancel x to the first is just x. This gives me 4 over 4, which is just x to the first. Half of 4 is 2. A third of 6, well, if I put that over again, it's 6 over 3, which is again 2. One fourth of 4 would be 4 over 4, which is 1. And one sixth of 6 is 6 over 6, which is 1. Again, there's reasons for those. As we go through these, you'll kind of see that. Extraneous solutions can occur when you raise both sides of an equation to a power. So, again, we are making sure that we check our answers. Hopefully you remember that an extraneous solution is something you find, but it doesn't work when you plug it back in. Okay. So, first things first. There are three steps here, similar to what we did yesterday. Get the radical by itself. And that's basically do the opposite as a track, do the opposite of multiply and divide if you have to do that. Simplify each side. So if it's possible, combine like terms or find things that are easily done, like square roots of nines is three, etc., and then solve for x. Okay. Here there's nothing to do kind of to both sides, so I have to get rid of the exponents here. And here's the thing, to get rid of a one half it's two. But two times one fourth is one half. It does not get rid of the exponent, so I'd have to square it again. Well, if I'm going to square it once, and I'm going to square it again, 2 times 2 means I'm going to take everything to the fourth power. And you say, why pick the fourth power? Well, look at the exponents. I got 1 half and 1 fourth. Whatever the, high, the lowest exponent is, I guess the highest denominator, is what you want to do to both sides. Because look what happens. On this side, it's real simple. 4 over 4 cancels, and I get 3x plus 7. On the other side, half of 4 is 2. So I actually get x plus 1 square. Remember what that means. That means x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is x squared plus 1x plus 1x is plus 2x, and then plus 1. And on the other side, nothing has changed. Now, hopefully you remember, because this kind of sums up, this whole section sums up everything we've been doing all year. How do I solve a quadratic? You bring everything to one side, so it's equal to 0, and then factor it if possible. So I'm going to minus 3x and minus 7 to both sides. I get x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And I can factor that. Minus 3 and plus 2. And remember, we always find the zeros by setting those terms equal to 0 and doing the opposite. So in this case, I'd add 3 to get 3. I'd minus 2 to get negative 2. And those are my two answers. I'm going to circle it, but I have to go back and check. If I plug in 3, 3 plus 1 is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. 9 plus 6, again I'm still plugging in 3 to both sides. 9 plus 7 is 16. The 4 through to 16 is 2. 2 equals 2. 3 works. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative 2 plus 1 in the square root of that. Um, the square root of negative 1 is i. On the other side, I'm going to get the 4th root of 1 because negative 6 plus 7 is 1 and the 4th root of 1 is just 1. 1 doesn't equal i. So negative 2 doesn't work. Okay. Now, it's not always the negative one that doesn't work. It just happens to work out on this problem. Let's find the next one, number 2 here. Again, the lowest exponent I see here is 6, the lowest denominator of the exponent. And 6 is going to cancel here to give me a real nice negative 2x plus 8. Over here, I'm going to get x minus 4 squared. Again, because 6 over 2 is squared. So I'm going to just rewrite it like that. Same thing as squared. Okay. Foil it out. x squared minus 4x and minus 4x is minus 8x equals negative 2 plus 8, 2x plus 8. Again, bring everything to the one side. We just got done doing a problem just like this. These cancel x squared minus 6x plus 8, which factors to give me x minus 4 and x minus 2. And when I set those equal, I get 4 and 2. Plug them in. 4 minus 4 is 0. Anything 0 to any power is 0. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. That works. Cool. Let's look at 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2 to the 1 third power. Negative 2 to the 1 third power means that. Right? Now if I plug in 2 on the other side, I get negative 4 plus 8 is 4. I get 4 to the 6th root. One thing I know is when I take a cube root of this, I'm going to get a negative number. When I take the 6th root of this, I'm going to get a positive number. And they are never going to equal each other. So 2 doesn't work, and 4 is my answer. Okay? 
Um, we're going to try one more here, and then, a couple more here actually, and then I'm going to have you try some. We're going to try 4A first here. This is already down to where we can't do anything, so I'm just going to square both sides. Those will cancel. X plus 56 equals X squared. When I see an X squared, everything must go to that side. It cancels. 0 equals X squared minus X minus 56. Factor it. Minus 8 and plus 7. And X equals 8 and negative 7. Let's double check them. 8 plus 56 is 64. The square root of 64 is 8. Yep, that's good. Negative 7 plus 56 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. But that says negative 7. So it doesn't work. Okay. Just 8. Let's go on to number 5. I'm going to have you kind of try the rest of them here. In this problem, to get the square root by itself, I have to minus the 5 first. So this goes back to kind of the step 1. That's the only problem that we've had to do this so far. Equals x minus 5. And now, of course, I would square both sides. Those will cancel. I get x plus 7 equals, well, x minus 5 squared, which is x minus 5 times x minus 5. And I get x squared minus 10x plus 25. And I'm going to bring everything over to one side. These cancel, these cancel. 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 18. x minus 9, x minus 2. Let's me get x equals 9 and 2 as my two solutions. Let me go back and plug them in here. 16 is square root of that is 4 plus 5 is 9. Yep, that works. If I plug in 2, 2 plus 7 is 9. Square root of that is 3 plus 5 is 8, not 2. 2 doesn't work. Notice we've had a lot of them that don't work. It doesn't always work that way. I'm going to tell you that for sure in 6 and in 7, you're going to get answers that do work. Both of them. Um, I want you to still plug them in and check it, just so you can see what I'm doing. But go through, work through the rest of these problems. There's five problems here. And come back and check your work when you're done. I'm going to come back to that one. Keep going. Brought everything to one side. Sorry, we're not going to do number 7 in class. We haven't done that yet. We're not going to either. Uh, 8, though, we can do. I can't get rid of this 2 because it's just going to be able to divide by 2 over here, so I might as well just square both sides. I'm going to get back to that one, too. Let's finish up here. On number 3, you had to take 4th power to both sides. you got a square here. You get here. This, ladies and gentlemen, looks differently, but it is the exact same problem as this, so I'm just going to tell you the answers are 9 and not negative 2, or and not 2. Okay, and I do want you to put an X to the ones that don't work. It's the exact same problem. I just set it up differently. Okay, um, For 4B, I have to go back in and check them yet. I got my answers. 6 over here, does that equal 18 plus 18 squared? That is 36 is 6. That works. Negative 3, I get a negative 9 plus 18 is 9 squared. That is 3 does not equal negative 3. That doesn't work. It's just 6. Um, negative 4, negative 3. Negative 12 plus 13 is 1. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. That works. Negative 9 plus 13 is 9. Square root of that is 3. Excuse me. Did I do that wrong? Sorry. Negative 9 plus 13 is 4. And square root of 4 is 2. Let's plug it in on this side. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. They both work. I don't have to cancel any out. Uh, 7, again, we're not doing 10. I'm going to go, again, square both sides here. Now, in doing this, those will cancel and I get 10x because everything is under the square root sign. But in this case, 
really what I have is two things times each other. So the 2 gets distributed. When the 2 is on the 2, it's 2 squared. When the 2 is on the 5x minus 25, it's like this. So now these cancel, and this is 4. 10x equals 4 times 5x minus 25. Distribute, just because you know how to do those problems, hopefully by this time in the year. X is on one side, numbers on the other. X equals 10. Plug it back in and check. 10 times 10 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10. Over here, I get 50 minus 25 is 25. Square root of that is 5 times 2 is 10. It works, and we are good. There's the note on 75C. Your homework is the other page. Um, except, let me see, is there a problem you're not going to do here? Nope, these are all good to go. Have a good day.